In this video, we will explain phase portraits of complex functions. We wish to understand how these beautiful, colorful pictures, some of which are presented later, are created. We also want to explain what you can learn from these phase portraits. Let's start by recalling real numbers. The real numbers correspond to the points of a straight line, which is also called the number line. Complex numbers, on the other hand, correspond to the points of a plane. If we draw a line connecting a complex number with the origin, then this makes an angle phi with the real axis, called the argument or phase of a complex number. Now, we can color all points with the same phase with a specific color. By doing this for all points of the plane, we obtain a radial coloring of the complex plane which will help illustrate phase portraits. Next, let's talk about functions. If f denotes a real valued function defined on the real numbers, then f maps a real number x to a real number f of x. We define the set of all x values to be the domain of f, and the set of all y values to be the range of f. If x runs through the domain of f, then y runs through the range. The set of all ordered pairs x, y forms the graph of the function which lies in the plane. For a complex function, however, a complex number z is assigned to a complex number w equals f of z. Thus, we need two separate complex planes. For each z value in the domain of the function, there is a corresponding w value in the other complex plane. Because the z and w complex planes are each two-dimensional, the graph of such a function would then be in a four-dimensional space. Since we cannot represent this, the question becomes how to visualize such complex functions. We can use a phase portrait to describe the W plane using radial coloring, discussed previously. Each point Z will then be assigned a color corresponding to the phase of its image point W. If we do this for all points of the Z plane, we get the phase portrait of the function F. Since the coloration of the W plane is always the same, independent of the function, all of the relevant information is contained in its phase portrait. Here we see again the formation of a phase portrait of a given function. Starting from the coloring of a W plane, we create the coloring of a Z plane. If we use a different color scheme in the W plane, we get a different phase portrait of that function in the Z plane. In this color scheme, some lines of the same color are emphasized. Another possibility is to highlight lines of the same magnitude, creating contour lines. In the W plane, these are circles around the origin, which then become visible as curves in the Z plane. Alternatively, the magnitudes can be made visible by intensity. This variant of the phase portrait is known as domain coloring. The following portrait was created by adding contour lines of the same phase as well as the same magnitude. It is striking to see that with analytic functions, families of lines perpendicular to each other arise. Which properties of the function f can we identify using its phase portrait? For one, you notice the points where all colors of the color scheme converge. Taking a closer look, we see that this is the zero of the function f. First, let's look at the simple example of a zero using the function f of z equals z squared, which has a zero at the origin. Because the argument of z squared is just twice the argument of z, f of z orbits the origin twice, while z orbits it only once. Therefore, in the phase portrait, all of the colors meet twice at the origin. In general, if z0 is the zero of an analytic function f, then f can be written as f of z equals z minus z0 to the nth power times g of z, where g is an analytic function satisfying g of z0 does not equal zero. The exponent n is called multiplicity of the zero.
If Z moves in a small circle around Z0, then G is nearly constant, and F behaves like Z minus Z0 to the nth power. Therefore, the function value W moves n times around the origin. Thus, a phase portrait is created at Z0, where all colors converge n times. At this point, too, all of the colors also meet. It is not a zero, but rather a pole of the function. If the function f has a pole at z0, it can be expressed as f of z equals g of z divided by z minus z0 to the nth power, with an analytic function g that is not zero at z0. Here, n is called the order of the pole. If z orbits z0 in a small circle, then the function value w orbits n times around the origin, but in the opposite direction. In the phase portrait, therefore, all colors meet n times, but their order is reversed, as can be observed on the color map. If you look at this phase portrait with the polar lattice in the w plane, you will notice many figures that look roughly like squares. A point, however, lies in the curvilinear polygon with 12 corners. To explain this, we must also consider the first derivative of the function f. A saddle point of the function f is a point where the derivative f prime of z0 vanishes, but its function value does not. Let us assume the derivatives vanish up to an order n so that the saddle point has an order n. The local expansion of the function f then can be expressed as f of z equals f of z0 plus z minus z0 to the n plus 1 power times g of z for an analytic function g that does not vanish at z0. If z orbits around z0 in a small circle, the image point of w circles the function value f of z0 exactly n plus 1 times. Since the function value is not zero, this is a saddle point and not a zero point. The point W meets the line with the argument of f of z0 exactly 2n plus 2 times. Therefore, in the phase portrait, 2n plus 2 lines of the same color meet at z0. In this example, we observe a saddle point of order 2. Another feature that can be seen in this phase portrait is the abrupt color transitions in some regions. These are called branch cuts. For example, let's look at the square root function. If we take the square root of a complex number, its argument is halved. If z approaches the negative real axis from above, root z will approach the positive imaginary axis. However, if z approaches from below, root z will approach the negative imaginary axis. Therefore, we observe a color jump at the negative real axis in the phase portrait. In fact, there are other functions whose square is z, such as the function negative root z, whose phase portrait we see next to it. Notably, both fit together at the negative real axis. A complete explanation for this can be given using the theory of Riemann surfaces. We hope that this has helped you gain some understanding regarding what can be observed using these vibrant pictures with phase portraits.